begin on page 56 in the Missalette. In the name of the Father and the Son and the, Hol and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, who suffered for us and by his Paschal mystery redeemed us, be with you all. And with your spirit. Lord and Father all holy, you willed that your son's cross should become the source of all blessings, <clears throat> the cause of all graces. <clears throat> Excuse me. Grant that we who on earth hold fast to the mysteries of his sacred passion may in heaven enter into the joys of his resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. First station, Jesus is sentenced to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, we have redeemed you. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Messiah, a king. <clears throat> With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. Second station, Jesus accepts the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. <laughs> Station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was our infirmities that he bore, <clears throat> our suffer sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, <clears throat> but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <laughs> Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. 
As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and found, fondled in her lap. As a mother com com comforts her son, so will I comfort you. <coughs> Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. As they led Jesus away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <clears throat> a faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. Seventh station, Jesus falls again under the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The watchmen came upon me as they made their rounds of the city. They struck me and wounded me and took my mantle from me. The guardian of the walls, I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my lover, what shall you tell him? that I am faint with love. Station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Instead, weep for your children. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Amen, amen. I say to you, 
Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. They brought Jesus to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each would, should take. <coughs> Eleventh station, Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus. And the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama samatachi, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The 13th station, Jesus' mother and friends lower his body from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <clears throat> there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth.
the 14th station, Jesus' mother and friends lay his body in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb. He had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Jesus rises in glory, victorious over death. At the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Let us pray the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My friends, we have given witness to the life-giving passion of the Lord. Let us go in peace, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please stand and join in our opening hymn number 470, These 40 Days of Lent, number 470. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Certainly welcome to all. A special welcome to the RCIA that they're here today for the rite of sending, um, that as they, in, in Lent, they begin the final period of their preparation for um, celebrating the Easter sacraments. So certainly welcome to, to, to the candidates and catechumen. For all of us, as we um, are in the season of Lent, if we, as we've just begun, we know that it's a time to um, draw closer to the Lord. But yet as we hear in the gospel today, Jesus is led into the desert and he's tempted. So we also face trials and temptations in our life. To prepare for these sacred mysteries, we acknowledge our sin and we ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you, 
and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God. My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And we heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, in bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For 
If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and, I'm, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours, if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but um, for me, certainly this is an exciting week, weekend, that uh, yesterday we had the first communion retreat at St. Michael in, in, in Hicksville, and it included um, students from, from St. Michael's and St. Mary's, and we ventured out this year also included St. Patrick's and, and Sacred Heart in Montpelier. So imagine all those young second graders as they're just filled with energy and excitement as they're getting ready, you know, a little bit later in the spring to make their first communion. So maybe that's a reminder to us of just the excitement that we should have and just the great gift that the Eucharist is to us. And then today, um, starting with the 1030 Mass there and going through the afternoon, we'll have a confirmation retreat. So once again, the, the, the students who are preparing for that important sacrament. So if you would, please keep them in prayers. And, and then beyond all of that, today, we celebrate the rite of, rite of sending. And so from here, we send 
uh, catechumen and candidates to um, the bishop or the diocese where um, there'll, there'll be a service this afternoon and um, RCI people from all over the diocese will, will come to um, hear that exhortation to um, continue their journey of um, joyful preparation for the celebration of the Easter sacraments. So certainly welcome and, and know, and a little bit later we'll, we'll call you up and, and uh, assure you of our prayers. But in a sense, as, as we're at the beginning of Lent, in a sense we have the RCIA to um, either thank or blame for Lent. That are our practices of discipline and prayer and sacrifices that uh, they didn't call it back then, but back in the early church, there was this practice where ones who um, weren't Christian, weren't Catholic, would um, undergo a period of study and preparation and formation, thinking about what to be baptized and to become um, a member of this Christian way of life. And, and so um, in their final period, which um, now is known to us as Lent, it would be a time of more intense kind of focus and sacrifice and prayer that they might help get themselves ready to be able to receive the sacraments at Easter. So that started out with RCA, which is that group. Well, then others started to see that, oh, that's a good thing for all of us as well, even those who are already baptized and members of the church. So that expanded to what we know today as our practices of prayer and sacrifice and penance and those kind of things that we do for, for Lent. Truly, it's a gift um, that, 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 that each year we're invited to enter into this sacred and holy time to um, renew our hearts and our souls and our minds and somehow ins be inspired by Christ that we might grow in the love for him. Now, as we look at the scripture readings for today, they, I think, offer us guidance, certainly to the RCIA candidates and catechumen and to all of us, you know, as we think about our, our journey of Lent and of life. So in the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, we hear Moses speaking to the people. So Moses has led the Israelites um, through the, the wilderness, the desert, and now they stand on, the, on kind of the verge of entering the promised land. And so Moses gathers them all together and, and, and first spends a long time reviewing the statutes and commandments and decrees of, of God. In today's passage, he, talks, um, uh, 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 he, he speaks to them about there's this basket of coming and offering their offerings of thanksgiving. And, 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 and um, so in the midst of that, Moses then um, has them remember or call to mind the ways that God has been with them. You know, throughout their history, how God called Abraham to leave his land and go off and become the father of what would, what would become a great nation, how they grew and became more numerous and prosperous, and, and then how they were inflicted to save slavery in Egypt, well, how God um, allowed Pharaoh or made Pharaoh um, free them and allow them to go and part of the Red Sea that they could continue on. And, and so, so, um, so Moses invites them to remember those ways that God has indeed been with them, guiding them on their journey. And so for us, Lent is a time for us to be able to do that as well, to, to be able to take some time to think about ways that God has, in fact, been a part of our life and guided us through times of joy and maybe um, especially during some, some trying times that we've faced in, in, in our life. And so in the midst of that, then, um, then, then Moses speaks to the people about offering thanks so when they think about what God has done truly, it should call, call them and us to want to offer a profound thanks to God. And, and one of the profound ways that we as Catholics do that is at every Mass. You know, I'm always inspired by the number of people that come out on Ash Wednesday. You know, churches are full. And it's like everybody, I, I think, has this desire to start anew and, you know, remember that they're, they're dust, that they won't live forever, and somehow are called to repentance and turn back to God. So I'm always inspired by that, and I'm grateful that they're, they're here. But I also have to admit that I'm a bit disheartened that they do not come to Mass all the time. It's like they miss out on this tremendous source of grace and inspiration from God that is offered to us weekly and even daily. In the scripture readings, we are remembered, we are reminded of the ways that God has been um, a part of our life in the past and continues to be a part of us. And in the sacred action of the Eucharist, it's like the, in that that we, along with the priest, offer, everybody offers their, their prayers, their sacrifices, their very lives along with the gifts presented on the altar um, through Jesus to the Father and, and, and the Spirit. So it's a profound gift of um, 
great hum humble prayer and praise and thanks that at every Mass we um, give of ourselves and offer to God. In today's Gospel from Luke, it focuses on Jesus being tempted as we hear Jesus is led by the Spirit into the desert where he is tempted by the devil. Three times the devil tempts Jesus. The devil tempts Jesus to use his power to um, control things the way he would want to. So it's like you're hungry. You know, that, that, that line, I always kind of get, get a little chuckle out of that, or one that's like probably one of the most obvious lines in the entire Bible. And so it's, it tells us that after 40 days in the desert, Jesus ate nothing, and at the end he was hungry. <laughs> you know, it's like, could anything be more clear? It's like, yeah, you know. So, so, so it says that he was hungry, and so, you know, it would seem like with his power, kind of a natural taking care of that physical hunger would be to take things under control and turn those rocks into bread. You know, but, but, but he knows he's able to um, resist the temptation of the devil by saying, well, it's not by bread alone that, that one lives, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then as the devil goes on, he um, tempts Jesus and the other two temptations to use his power to, um, and, and, and focus on, on the desire for worldly power and avoiding sufferings and trials of this life. The devil says, if Jesus will worship the devil, the devil will give him all the kingdoms of the earth. Now, don't we at times want to have some of that power and authority and influence? You know, I think about children in classrooms, you know, who's the head of the class or who has some influence over others, or maybe on a ball team, you know, who's the captain. Now, some of those are certainly needed and, and, and good, but, but um, also it keeps calling us back to that, that whole call to humbly recognize the things of God in our life and how do we embrace them. And I think also of perhaps in the family, you know, who has some authority or influence. I think at places of work, I think within a community and even within our parish, that kind of desire at times for influence and authority. So, so Jesus, once again, is able to resist that, that, that uh, kind of temptation of worldly power, knowing that God isn't about building this kingdom but about building the kingdom of heaven. And then finally, we hear um, the, the devil tempt Jesus to take the easy way. I mean, who wants to pay their dues? You know, it's like, wouldn't it be so, so much simpler? Jesus would just jump off the parapet of the temple and, and, and have this kind of event that would just be real spectacular. God's angels would come and protect him and save him. And all of a sudden, everybody would know that Jesus, there's something special and he's divine. So wouldn't that be a whole lot easier and Jesus gone out and calling disciples and teaching the crowds and performing miracles and, you know, all the other things that Jesus was, was um, about doing as he uh, did his public ministry. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be so much easier and better than Jesus having to go to the cross and suffer the agony and persecution and crucifixion and death? But once again, Jesus knows that there's something far more that, that, that God has. So, so sometimes I think along those lines of just kind of that, you know, wanting to impress and wow and, and, and all of that. Once in a while, I'll catch part of um, the, the, the show on TV, America's Got Talent. I don't know if you ever watch that. It's like, like, like I don't regularly, but, but once in a while, I'll ca capture some of that. You know, some of it's truly amazing. Ones who have an ability to sing or play an instrument or some other kind of magician or, or artistic talent. You know, where you just look at that and just are amazed. But then there are others that you just have to look at it and say, gee, that's bizarre. You know, why would, you know, even sometimes the judges will kind of cringe and step back like, gee, are they gonna hurt themselves? Or, you know, why would anybody, you know? So, so it's like somehow, you know, they wanna have this wow factor to be, you know, more impressive or, you know, somehow be recognized and, and noticed. Now that might be okay if you're striving for some prize on a, on, on a TV show, but obviously when it comes to honoring God, it, it, it causes us to not to just seek that worldly fame and attention, but to focus on the things of God. In, in each step, Jesus is able to resist the temptations because he knows the greater importance and indeed the blessings that come from, from being faithful to God. We, of course, face temptations and trials. We at times are tempted to ignore God and get caught up in the daily pursuits of life. When even at, at time, we even at times may wonder, why does God allow temptations and, and trials to afflict us? Wouldn't it be much better if we were somehow just granted the grace to resist temptations and live a life perfectly united with God? 
So there's also this example that, you know, sometimes as we face those trials and sufferings and temptations, maybe we question, it's like, why, why does God allow that? Well, there's this great story, example of St. Anthony of Egypt. He's also referred to as St. Anthony of the Desert. Started in about the third century, so again, very early in the life of the church. Um, there, there was this group that were referred to as Desert Fathers. So St. Anthony was one of them that, that he um, felt called to leave the civilization and his e Egyptian community and go out in a hermitage and live in the desert. You know, so it's like there he could be um, isolated from the distractions and temptations of the world and focus on prayer and scripture and the things of God. You know, so you think what, 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 what a heavenly bliss and a blessing that would be. But he found that even there he faced temptations by Satan. You know, so at times, you know, as he would pray and pray and, and, and do fasting and those kind of things, he would be led by the devil to think that's not enough, you know, or, or as he would um, sacrifice and do some of those other things to help him um, recognize the sufferings of Christ, he would be led to the sin of presumption, thinking, oh, I don't really need to do any of that. God will just save me, and I don't need to, need to worry about anything. You know, and even he was led to almost a point of despair. And it said that he, he faced physical um, trials and persecutions by the devil. At one point, it was almost about an inch from, from taking his life. All of a sudden, this ray of light appeared upon him, shone upon him, and immediately he sensed the presence of God, and the devil left. And, and, and so he was grateful for that. But then, then he, he spoke to God. Um, so, so, so Anthony, so he said, Where were you, my Lord and Master? Why didn't you appear at the beginning to stop my pain? God answered, he said, Anthony, I was right here, but I wanted to see you in action. And now, because you held out and did not surrender, I will ever be your helper and never depart from you. Hopefully, Lent is not a time when the devil inflicts physical harm on us, but we know that we will face temptations. May the prayer, fasting, and other sacrifices of Lent assure us that Jesus is always close by our side. May they be a ray of light that helps us resist those temptations and draw closer to Jesus, the one who offers us the promise of eternal happiness. At this time, we'll continue with the rite of sending. Once again, we have a catechumen, one who's never been baptized, and candidates who have um, in some other church, but are now seeking full communion in the Catholic Church. Reverend Father, this catechumen is beginning his final period of preparation and purification leading to his initiation. He has found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now Philip asks that he be recognized for the progress he has made in his spiritual formation and that he receives the assurance of our blessings and prayers as he goes forth to the rite of election celebrated Sunday afternoon at Holy Rosary Cathedral by Monsignor William Kabaki. Those who are to be sent to the celebration of election in Christ come forward together with those who will be your godparent. Philip Jeremy Richmond. My dear friends, this catechumen has been preparing for the sacraments of initiation he hopes that he will be found ready to participate in the rite of election and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about his readiness before he is presented to Monsignor. So I turn to you, the godparent, for your testimony about this catechumen, Philip Richmond. Has he taken his formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? Has he given evidence of his conversion by the example of his life? Yes. Do you judge Philip to be ready to be presented to Monsignor for the right of election? I do. 
And now I in invite you or ask you, the members of this community, um, are, are you ready to support the testimony expressed about this catechumen and include him in your prayers and affections as we move toward Easter? If so, say we are. We are. My dear catechumen, this community gladly recommends you to Monsignor Kabaki, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. The church, in the name of Christ, sends you to Monsignor Kabaki, who will exhort you to live in deeper conformity to the life of Christ. Now offer your name for enrollment in the book of elect. Reverend Father, I now present to you these candidates who are beginning their final preparation for the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist and reception into full communion of the Catholic Church. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now they ask that they be recognized for the progress they have made in their spiritual formation, and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forth for recognition by Monsignor William Kabaki Sunday afternoon. Those who are to be recognized <clears throat> come forward together with your sponsor. Stephanie Ann Bunnell, Amanda Lee Herman, John David Sessler. My dear friends, these candidates already one with us by reason of, of their baptism in Christ have asked to be able to participate fully in the sacramental life of the Catholic Church. Those who know them have judged them to be sincere in their desire. During the period of their catechetical formation, they have listened to the word of Christ and endeavored to follow his commands more perfectly. They have shared the company of their Christian brothers and sisters in this community and join with them in prayer. And so I announce to all of you here that our community supports these candidates in their desire. Therefore, I ask their sponsors to state their opinion so that all may hear. So sponsors, as God is your witness, do you consider these candidates, Stephanie, Amanda, and John, ready to receive the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist and be received into full communion with the Catholic Church? Once again, members of this community, are you ready to support the testimony expressed about these candidates and include them in your prayers and affection as we move toward Easter? Amen. And now, my dear friends, candidates, <clears throat> I address you. Your own sponsors and this entire community have spoken in your favor. The church, in the name of Christ, accepts their testimony and sends you to Monsignor Kabaki, who will exhort you to live in deeper conformity to the life of Christ. Now offer your names for enrollment in the book of the elect.
I invite you all to please stand as we, uh, in, in the petitions, and normally as we offer our uh, uh, prayers to God, we uh, include them also in a special way in our prayers and petitions this day. So my brothers and sisters, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. This catechumen and these candidates will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and together come to share the joys of Easter. For Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all the church leaders, like Moses, may God grant them the grace to protect us and guide us through the trials of this life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all world leaders, especially as they face war in the Ukraine, may leaders put aside selfish um, ambition and fears and respect the freedom of, and dignity of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people caught up in the devastation of war, exile, and an uncertain future, May they be protected and find hope in the promise of God's everlasting care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of this faith community and all Christians, may the season of Lent be a time to focus on prayer, fasting, and giving alms so that we will be united with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students preparing for First Communion and Confirmation, especially as they have their retreats this weekend, may this be a special time for them to deepen their faith and draw closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all RCIA candidates who celebrate the right of election this Sunday, may our prayers be with them as they prepare to share the fullness of the Catholic faith at Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, <clears throat> godparents, and sponsors who accept the important role of nurturing faith in others, may they always be faithful witnesses to the promises offered to us in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering from disease or trials, may Jesus be close to them and give them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Carl Sonnenberger, may the faithful departed experience the glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the parish book of intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, God, parent and sponsor, if you'll place your hand on the shoulder of your can candidates and catechumen as I offer this prayer. God of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide this catechumen and, and these candidates in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation, build them into the kingdom of your Son, and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And once again, we congratulate you on your journey this far and look forward to celebrating with you at Easter. So congratulations. <laughs> now you may be seated. Now please be seated for the offering, offertory. Our offertory hymn is number 722 on Eagle's Wings, number 722.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather to yourself a, 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 a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you." In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our first communion hymn, number 571, One Bread, One Body.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that there are the little black booklets um, that has a daily reflection for each day of Lent. So if you haven't gotten one of those, um, certainly you're welcome to take that as far as part of your Lenten prayer and, and, and ad, added works. Also a reminder that tomorrow on Monday, being the first Monday of the month, there is 8.30 a.m. Mass at St. Um, Joseph in Blakesley. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 475, The Glory of These Forty Days, number 475. So oh.